Without a proper tax setup, buying another business could actually hurt you financially, cost you tax dollars and unnecessary audits. In this video, I will show you if you are buying another business, how to properly buy it to maximize your tax deductions. And at the same time, if you're buying a business for the purpose of reselling it in the future, in this video, I will show you how you can sell that same business that you bought tax-free. Ready? Let's dive into it. But before we continue, just a quick introduction. Hey, my name is Boris Mushaif. I'm a CPA and a tax strategist. Every Tuesday, I release a tax strategy video here on YouTube for business owners like you. You have a tax preparer. You do not have a tax planner or a tax strategist. My job is to help you save money on taxes. So go ahead, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I release a tax strategy video that will help you save money on taxes. And check out the description below for more resources that I've put together for you. Now, let's get to our tax strategy. Okay, cool. Let's get started with this tax strategy. I put my marker somewhere. Okay, here it is. All right, awesome. So, uh, actually, in this video, the way we're going to break down this video so that you can better understand it is that first we're going to talk about the basics, right? The basics of buying the business so that you can understand it better. Then we're going to talk about a tax strategy of buying a business and how to maximize your tax deductions. And at the same time, after I explain to you the basics and a tax strategy behind it, we're going to talk about Robert. Robert is an actual client of ours. We're going to do a live example, a case study of what he went through when he was purchasing a business and how we have helped him structure that purchase so that he can maximize his tax deductions. At the same time, he's looking to sell this business and he's going to sell it tax free. And I will show you all the tax secrets in this video. Now, Let's talk about identifying. Now, identifying entity. When you are buying another business, you need to make sure you identify what type of entity are you buying. Is it an LLC partnership? Is it an S corporation or a C corporation? That could greatly help you identify what type of a purchase agreement you want to have. Generally, there's two types of purchase agreements. One of them is a stock purchase agreement and another one is an asset purchase agreement. Stock purchase agreement doesn't give you any tax benefits. Think of it this way. If you're buying a stock right now on a stock market, what happens? When you buy that stock, do you write it off as an expense that you bought another uh, security, another investment? No. If you buy an Apple stock, for example, for 0.001%, <laughs> right? You don't get it as a write-off. Now think about buying another business. If you buying a business, that could be a stock purchase, it's an S corporation or a C corporation, you're buying 100% of that stock or an LLC membership purchase if it's an LLC. Well, guess what? By buying that stock, you are not writing off as a business expense. Instead, you're exchanging cash, I mean asset for an asset, cash for another type of an asset. That's why buying a stock purchase, a stock purchase agreement, excuse me, does not give you any tax benefits. Now, don't get me wrong. Some um, some structures actually do need a stock purchase, but in most cases they don't. And you need to be educated enough about this because you are working with a tax advisor, hopefully, right? Not a tax preparer. Now, if you want to maximize, oops, almost fell there. If you want to maximize your business purchase, the new business that you're buying, you want to make sure that it is an asset purchase. Now, why is asset purchase very, very important? Because when you're buying another business, you're buying the assets of the business and you're forming a new entity. When you are buying assets of another business, you need to identify or the purchase agreement needs to identify, we're gonna talk about that, what type of assets you're buying. Why? Because those assets can be depreciated and that will give you a tax deduction. Those assets could be depreciated over five, seven, 10, 15 years, depending what that asset is. Or if you use a special depreciation rules, which is the bonus depreciation, you can take 80% of that deduction of that purchase price that is attributed to the asset right away in your first year. That's why it's important for you to know the differences between stock purchase and an asset purchase. Some people also think if I'm buying another business, I can write it off as an expense. No, what happens, there's two things happening here. Again, stock and asset, right? If you're buying a stock in another business, 
chances are if you're buying a stock in another business and you have no other way that attorney said you can't do it that person has a great strategy when selling you that stock we're not going to talk about it in this video we're going to briefly cover it in robert's case but what you want to do from your standpoint you want to make sure you have an asset purchase now we're going to continue with a tax strategy on asset purchase right after this break Hey, Boris Mushave here. Sorry for the quick interruption. Five seconds, I promise. I want to make sure you get your free PDF, Seven Write-Offs Every S-Corporation Business Owner Must Know. The link to this free PDF is in the description below. That's it. Thank you so much. Continue watching. Hey, all right. Welcome back. Cool. Awesome. Now, let's talk about a tax strategy of buying a business as a asset purchase. First, and foremost, what's really, really important when you're buying another business, there's going to be an agreement that your attorney is going to put together with that other attorney that is selling the business. Very often, those agreements are missing a key component in that asset purchase. And what is that? That is identifying assets in the agreement. Strategy number one is make sure you have an asset purchase. Strategy number two you want to make sure that the agreement specifically identifies assets that you are buying and what is the fair market value of those assets. Why? Because you can write it off on your business taxes as an asset expense. You can depreciate that. And identifying those assets in the agreement is very, very important. Now, in most cases, Businesses do not sell their assets for the cost of what the fair market value of the assets are. I'll give you a good example. Let's say, for example, actually in Robert's case, which we're going to talk about in a second, he bought a business for $968,000, okay? Now, Robert's, the cost of the equipment in that purchase agreement, and I was very adamant about it when I was talking to the attorneys, but make sure there is a breakdown of the equipment. This is what your tax advisor will do for you, by the way, not a tax preparer. If you have a tax preparer, you are overpaying in taxes. And what you need is a tax advisor that knows tax planning strategies. Now, back to Robert. Robert, uh, in his $968,000 purchase, equipment was valued at $65,000, vehicles $28,000, and something that is called goodwill. $875,000 of a goodwill. Now, what is really a goodwill? A goodwill could be could mean many different things, but it's an intangible asset. Meaning to say, the business that Robert was buying, it was a um, the business had a name, it had reputation, it had customers, it had uh, recognition. It's not something that is a, is a tangible asset. It is intangible asset. So because the assets that he bought were very very cheap, right? They were ninety three thousand dollars, but everything else was goodwill. Now, goodwill actually can also be amortized over the course of 15 years. Now, we're going to come back to Robert. We're going to talk about that in a second. Actually, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but coming back to the tax strategy, the agreement, the agreement between you and the seller must identify all the assets and anything that is remainder, then that is goodwill. But it's got to be stated specifically in the agreement. And not to get audited by the IRS or not to raise any red flags. IRS says, if you are buying a business, you better fill out form 8594. You and the seller and both of your forms must match. That's weird. Think about it. You bought the business at the beginning of the year. Now comes the tax time and you're hopefully your preparer will say, hey, we need to prepare this. We need to match it with the seller and the seller probably is not going to return your calls by the time. So very, very important that form 8594 be filled out at the time of the purchase and be part of your purchase agreement. That is exactly what happened with Robert. It was a smooth tax preparation time and maximizing his deductions. Why? Because we made sure we had, it was an asset purchase, okay? We had all the uh, equipment, all the assets listed on the agreement, including goodwill and 8594 form was what? Was prepared in advance and put together with a purchase agreement. Now, when you're buying another business, you need as in an asset purchase. Remember, you're buying assets in another business. That means you need to form a new business for yourself. Now, in most cases, obviously, an S-corporation, 
saves you the most amount of taxes if it is your main operating business. And I usually recommend having an S corporation for your main operating business. But if you're buying a second business, or if you're buying an investment business type of thing, and you're looking to sell this down the road, you wanna make sure that you have a proper entity to do that. In Robert's case, we had a C corporation so that when he sells the business, doesn't have to pay much tax tax on that sale. And we're gonna talk about Robert and his uh, tax strategy right after this break. Hey, just a quick commercial break. First of all, thank you so much for watching this video. Second of all, if you are watching this video, you are my subscriber or new to my channel, I would appreciate it if you like the video, share it, say hello in the comments. It really helps the YouTube to promote my channel a lot more when there is an engagement. I just wanted to say I appreciate you. Let's get back to our video. Hey, all right, welcome back. Let's talk about Robert. Now, Robert went through an asset purchase. He's an actual client of ours and he knew he needs a tax advisor, so voila, he saved tons of money on this asset purchase, right? So what happened, Robert is actually a multi, he bought a multi-million dollar business. Uh, well, now his business is actually a multi-million dollar. It was not making as much at that time, I believe. Uh, and he bought the business for $968,000. This business is located in the state of Oklahoma, and this was a great opportunity for him, so he decided to buy this business. Now, the the, the sale was structured as an asset purchase, not as a stock purchase. Remember, if he was to buy for $968,000 a stock in that business, guess what? He would not be able to write that off. It will just be an asset for an asset, cash for another stock, and that's it. And he would operate the business, but the purchase would not be a write-off. Now, what happened is that, like we uh, talked about it earlier, right? He had equipment worth of $65,000, vehicles worth of $28,000. So 65 and 28 was written off 100%. Why? Because it's equipment at the time when he was buying the business, bonus depreciation allowed you to write off asset purchase of up to $100,000. And that is exactly what we did for Robert. He wrote off $93,000, bam, right off the bat. Unfortunately, the goodwill was very, very high. So when you are buying a business, you wanna make sure that the assets, coming back to our strategy right here, assets are properly valued at a fair market value. The more the assets are valued, the more you can write that off as an expense. Now, he had a goodwill of 875,000. The business that he bought had a great reputation, reputation, great customer base, and also goodwill could also include employees, right? You've got a great employee selling, a great company, excuse me, with great employees. So that's what gives the value. Goodwill is amortized over 15 years. It's not depreciated. IRS uses the term amortization because it is an intangible, intangible asset. So every year he gets a deduction, 875,000 divided by 15 years. Now, if this was a stock purchase, that would not be the case for him, okay? So, that's what happened. Now, Robert and I have been working for years now, and I told Robert, Robert, you already have a main operating business, which is an S corporation, that's great for you. What is the purpose of this business? He's like, oh, Boris, I am going to, I am, this business is going to be a cash cow for us. It is gonna make us so much money, and I know I have exact strategy for it, but at the same time, I wanna sell the business. And the light bulb went off for me, I'm like, oh, you're gonna sell this business, actually, we have this code, section 1202 in the IRS, that says if you sell a business which is structured as a C corporation, you hold on to that business for five years, the assets of the business are less than $50 million, well, guess what? Any gain on the sale of your stock, right? Remember, if Robert is gonna sell the business, he's now, he's gonna use a strategy and a tax advisor. <laughs> we're not gonna sell it as an asset purchase. We, we, we want the tax benefit, okay? So if he sells the stock in his C corporation, that stock is tax-free up to $10 million. You've heard me right. It's a code in the IRS. Go ahead and check it out, section 1202. Now, the, of course you have to meet the qualifications. Now, it has to be a newly formed C corporation or a new business, right? They, um, the assets of the business are under $50 million, and it has to be a C corporation. It can be an LLC converted to a C corporation, but it cannot be an S corporation. 
Also, if the company was ever an S corporation and it revokes its status to be a C corporation, that disqualifies it. So it has to be from the get-go. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, planning, 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 tax advisory is really, 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 really important for you, okay? So with that being said, what happened is that his company is now structured as a C corporation. We put together all the legal documents, the attorneys were involved from the get-go, perfect. Now, when he's ready to sell this business and he meets his five-year mark, he's gonna sell this business as stock in his business. He's not selling the ad, it's not, it cannot be an asset purchase. Now, remember, he's the seller. He wants to sell it as a stock. Guess what? Gain on that stock up to $10 million will be tax-free. You got that, okay? So, super, super important. That's Robert, and when he was buying a business, we went through identifying the entity, what is the purchase type, uh, we went through doing this tax strategy using everything over here, and voila, you have an example of a business owner that used the tax advisor to make sure that not only are you reducing your taxes now, in the current year, but every year going forward and planning for the future and building wealth. Thanks so much for watching, until the next time.